shift. I want real shift. Nobody can escape me. You tell him he's next. I'm gonna cancel him. I want sh so you don't have to. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Go for it. So it's been a while since I did a retro review, but I felt like it was a good time for me to revisit Rocky 3, especially considering Creed 3 is coming out very soon. And just for me personally, sometimes when you watch a lot of garbage, which I do, you just want to go into the past and watch something you love for a change. It's almost like a movie palette cleanser, and Rocky 3 did just that for me. The strategy, that's all. I know what I'm doing. No, you don't know what you're doing. Now I was going to come on here and talk about how this might not be the best Rocky movie, but it certainly is my favorite Rocky movie. However, after watching it for the hundredth time and having the same emotional reaction I had the first time I watched it, I'm now prepared to go out on a limb and deliver a real take and say this is the best Rocky movie. Boys, don't get mentally erected. It's a free country. No, just don't get erected. Right? Because to me, it has everything you could ever want in a memorable cinematic experience. It's inspirational. It's got character development. It's got great messages, great characters. It's quotable. And it inspires a very pure and genuine emotional reaction every single time, no matter how many times you've seen it. Plus, it's about as high T as any movie has ever been. Apollo and Rocky skipping through the waves aside. What the hell am I looking at? When does this happen in the movie? To me, this is just the most Rocky of all the Rocky movies. From the moment it starts, you can't help but think about that Eddie Murphy bit from his stand-up, where he talks about how Italians get all worked up watching Rocky movies. I think a lot of people can get all worked up watching Rocky movies. They have that kind of impact on you. All right, right now! Especially when this movie opens with one of the greatest montages in cinematic history. When you hear that guitar start to play the opening notes of Eye of the Tiger, I would think you'd be dead inside if you don't get goosebumps. Not to mention, this montage is setting the stage for the entire story that is going to be told in this movie. Right away, we see that Rocky has kind of lost his focus since becoming champion. And he's not really fighting anyone who's a real challenge to him. He's living a rich and cushy lifestyle, and he's not hungry anymore. So right away, you can say that Rocky III is definitely a cautionary tale and the price that fame can have on someone. And then we're introduced to the young and up-and-coming Clubber Lang. Great name, by the way. He's watching from the crowd and fighting his way up the ranks. This montage says a lot about how two different people in two different situations kind of influences or doesn't influence their drive or hunger for more. Rocky at the beginning of this movie has it all. He's the champ. He's got a family. He's got a great trainer. He's got all the money you could ever ask for. And that brings me to the charity fight with Thunderlips, played by Hulk Hogan, of course. The ultimate male versus the ultimate meatball. I'd be lying to you if I said that Hulk Hogan's inclusion in this movie wasn't a huge factor as to why I liked this movie so much growing up. And I think this scene was clearly implemented to take advantage of a rising star in the wrestling world. But this scene also serves a purpose for the greater story being told. Because it's the first instance that we see Rocky taking a situation too lightly. Listen, uh, after the match, how about if, uh, we get a Polaroid together, okay? He takes this fight for an exhibition, because that's what it's called. But the other guy came there wanting to make a name for himself. And it's kind of foreshadowing the conflict that he'll later have with Clubber Lang. The next big moment is the statue ceremony at the Art Museum in Philadelphia. And again, we see a Rocky who is still not 100% comfortable with his success. And it kind of feels like he's been talked into retirement by either Mickey or Adrian or both. Another sign of his current lack of ambition. And this is also where we get our first encounter with Clubber Lang, who publicly berates and taunts Rocky and goads him into fighting him after some choice words directed at his wife, Adrian. Hey, woman. Hey, woman. Bring your pretty little self over to my apartment tonight. I'm not sure you're a real man. At this moment, Rocky is already feeling a bit insecure, and it's made even worse when Mickey tells him that you flat out can't beat this guy. Rocky got civilized when he won the belt, which is the worst thing that can happen to any fighter. So after some convincing, Rocky takes the fight. 
but again, he's not really taking the fight all that seriously. And he trains in a very cushy and half-assed way. Meanwhile, Clubber Lang is training in a dungeon somewhere. <laughs> Once we get to the night of fight one, Mickey has this health scare and it forces him to stay in the locker room. So Rocky is now not only lacking confidence, but he's distracted by Mickey's situation. And this leads to him getting beaten about as easily as we've ever seen him get beat. And Mickey also tragically dies right after, so basically Rocky lost a lot in this one night. And this all sets up the big comeback story within the story that we all know is coming in a Rocky movie. It's a hero's journey. He cannot properly triumph until he's experienced some setbacks. And he gets some help from an unlikely source, his old enemy, Apollo Creed. Now when we fought, you had that eye of the tiger, man, the edge. And he's going to help him get his eye of the tiger back, and he's going to do that by taking things back to basics. Something that I can relate to just having a YouTube channel. Rocky's lack of interest or effort initially frustrates Apollo, there is no tomorrow! And of course, Adrian is the only one who could snap Rocky out of his funk. Powerful words from someone you love and trust can do amazing things for your psyche. And Adrian basically tells him to stop living in fear and stop worrying about losing what you got and learn to fight for yourself again and no one else. And even if you lose, make sure you lose with no excuses. I mean, have you ever heard a better message about success and failure in your life? Next, we get another training montage with the classic Rocky theme. And at this point, you pretty much know that Clubber Lang is in deep shit. So Rocky gets his swagger back and now we are ready for the rematch. Addiction, pain. And Rocky has a different look in his eyes this time around. He's actually got a plan. And the plan is to wear out the overzealous Clubber Lang and use his overconfidence against him. And it works masterfully. The comeback kid does it again and he rope-a-dopes his way to another victory. It's not easy to take a character who's already overcome a lot and still make him feel like an underdog, but that's exactly what they do in Rocky 3. They make Rocky have to overcome his toughest opponent yet. His own self out. He has to deal with the physical threat of Clubber Lang in addition to his own emotional demons. And I can't imagine anyone not relating to that message. I highly recommend watching Rocky 3 if you haven't in a while. It's worth it and it's literally the reason why we watch movies. That's why I'm giving Rocky 3 the Bill and Ted. Excellent! Y'all be cool. Right on.